This presentation is entitled, The Best is Yet to Come. Just for clarification before I continue, in all of my studies I use Yote Vafe in Hebrew, which I like to pronounce as Yahweh. Some people pronounce the four Hebrew letters of Yote Vafe as Yehovah and others as Yahuwah instead of Lord which is a title and not a name. I also use Yeshua instead of Jesus, which is not a translation, but a transliteration. The name Jesus really has no meaning. In Hebrew nor in English, Yahweh and Yeshua are the actual original Hebrew names that speak of our Savior's true nature and character. And we should remember that the Father has a Hebrew name. Yahweh. And uh, the son's name is in the father's name. So therefore the son also has a Hebrew name. So for that reason I prefer to use the Hebrew names because they express something and they mean something. Let's go to Luke chapter 21, the verses 25 to 28. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. Yeshua says to his faithful followers, There is going to be a lot of trouble in this world before it's all over. But the best is yet to come. At the time when everything looks bleak, when everything is in uproar, when there is famine, earthquake, war, distress of nation, when men's hearts are failing them for fear, then look up and lift up your heads. Don't be discouraged about what is going on around you, because these are signs that your redemption is drawing nigh. When you see all these signs announcing his second coming, consider these as good news. It is heading for the climax. This world as we know it is coming to an end. You are almost home. For Yahweh's faithful children, for his loyal followers, now is a time to look up. It is time to rejoice because the best is still to come. Redemption, eternal happiness, and eternal life. But for the unbelieving, for the worldling, for the transgressors, for the wicked, it will be a fearful waiting for the judgment. I believe this generation, you and I, live in a very exciting time, meaning that this generation has the potential of witnessing the second coming of Yeshua, the Messiah, in the clouds of heaven. This is a time when the prophecies foretold hundreds of years ago are being fulfilled before our very eyes. Just like Yeshua told his disciples how fortunate, how blessed they were to live in a time when the prophecies pointing to his first coming were being fulfilled. We read in Luke 10, 23-24, And he turned him unto his disciples, and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that ye see. For I tell you that many prophets 
and kings have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. It was a great privilege for the disciples to live during the time of the first advent of the Messiah. It was a privilege for them to be walking and talking with the King of the universe, with the Creator Himself. However, it will even be a greater privilege, a greater blessing for His faithful people that are alive to witness the second coming as this will be the climax of all ages. True, there will be hard times before it's all over. There will be perplexities, persecution, pestilences, earthquakes, wars, bloodshed, etc. We read in Matthew 10.22 and ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. We need to remind ourselves continuously, the best is yet to come. For those who cling to his word with all their heart, soul, and strength. The real Messiah, the Hebrew Yeshua, will reveal himself as a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He will keep His promise, but it is up to me and you to be ready. No one knows what is tomorrow, as there is no promise for tomorrow. We have only today. That's why Scripture states in Hebrews 3.15, today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. Accept the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMashiach and submit to him who is standing there with outstretched hands, saying, I have paid the ransom. Go free. I have served your time. Believe me and accept my offer by faith and then go by my strength and sin no more. Yeshua only has the power to forgive past sins, and He alone has the power to keep anyone from sinning. Just believe it. Faith knows that the best is yet to come. Yeshua said in John 16, 33, In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John 14, 1 to 3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and receive you unto myself, that's where I am, there ye may be also. Romans 8.35 and 38-39 ask the question, Who shall separate us from the love of Messiah? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, O sword, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Elohim, which is in Messiah, Yeshua, our Master. The important thing on my part and your part is that I make sure that I cling to Yeshua, the Messiah, the living Torah, that my sins are forgiven, 
that my life is in harmony with him, only then the best for me is yet to come. There was a woman who had been diagnosed with a terminal illness and had been given three months to live. So as she was getting her things in order, she contacted her pastor and had him come to her house to discuss certain aspects of her final wishes. She told him which songs she wanted sung at the service, what scriptures she would like read, and what outfit she wanted to be buried in. The woman also requested to be buried with her favorite Bible and with a fork in my right hand. The pastor stood looking at the woman, not knowing quite what to say. That surprises you, doesn't it? The woman asked. Well, to be honest, I'm puzzled by the request, said the pastor. The woman explained, in all my years of attending church socials and potluck dinners, I always remember that when the dishes for the main course were being cleared, someone would inevitably lean over and say, keep your fork. It was my favorite part because I knew that something better was coming. I like velvet chocolate cake or deep dish apple pie. Something wonderful and with substance. So I just want people to see me there in that casket with a fork in my hand and I want them to wonder, what's with a fork? Then I want you to tell them, keep your fork. The best is yet to come. The pastor's eyes swelled up with tears of joy as he hugged the woman goodbye. He knew this would be one of the last times he would see her before her death. But he also knew that the woman had a better grasp of heaven than he did. She knew that something better was coming. At the funeral, people were walking by the woman's casket and they saw the pretty dress she was wearing and her favorite Bible and the fork placed in her right hand. Over and over, the pastor heard the what's with the fork. And over and over he smiled. During his message, the pastor told the people of the conversation he had with the woman shortly before she died. He also told them about the fork and about what it symbolized to her. The pastor told the people how he could not stop thinking about the fork and told them that they probably would not be able to stop thinking about it either. He was right. So the next time you reach down for your fork, let it remind you, I mean those who have made Yeshua the personal Savior, who are walking in his footsteps, for those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that the best is yet to come. We read in 1 Corinthians 2.9, what no one ever saw or heard, what no one ever thought could happen, is the very thing Yahweh prepared for those who love him. To love the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great I Am, and Yeshua HaMashiach means to put him first. To love and to serve him with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. It's an undivided love. He is our priority. As Psalm 42.1 expresses it, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O Elohim. Once we have tasted and seen that Yahweh is good, 
we will have no desire for the things of this world, but will daily search His Word to learn more of Him. We feel like Psalm 1910, His Word is more precious than gold, than much pure gold, sweeter than honey, than honey from the comb. Yahweh said in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. If we love him, we will without hesitation delight to obey his will, his instructions, his Torah. His commandments, as recorded in John 14, 15, 23, John 15, 10, and 1 John 5, 3. That means the best is yet to come. Yeshua said to his disciples in John 14, 27, just before he ascended to heaven, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Shalom.